I'm Colin Ambrose. Welcome to American Rivers Tour. I own a restaurant in Sag Harbor, New York called Estia's Little Kitchen. But when I'm not working, I love to get out on the rivers across the country, meet chefs and guides, and spend time learning about their little corner of the woods. It's a trip that I wouldn't miss for a lifetime. Thanks for joining us on the American Rivers Tour. I hope you get a chance to try this trip out someday too. I've come all the way from New York to give this a try today and I've been looking forward to it for a long time. It's a beautiful place and this is where the river runs through it. Welcome to Montana. I made it back to the Black Coffee Roasting Company and I'm glad I did. It might be the best cup of coffee I've had all year. You know, I'll start out with the egg in December. In fact, anywhere from about October all the way till about March, we're throwing eggs around here. You've got your brown spawning first, we're throwing out eggs. Then you got white fish throwing out eggs in the winter. They're typically a December spawner. And then, you know, March, sometimes as early as February, the rainbows and cutties will start spawning too. So eggs are always a great uh, dropper fly behind your stone fly. This is the Clark Fork River named by and for William Clark, the explorer who came through here with the Corps of Discovery years ago. Big university here. And as you can see, it's nestled in the mountains. We're gonna try to find a piece of river that doesn't have so much ice on the edge where the water might allow me to walk in up to my knees and have a safe spot. Uh, we are on the Blackfoot River, um, probably the midsection of it, just north of Turnoff for Sealy Lake, also known as Clearwater Junction, because that's where the Clearwater River comes into the Blackfoot, and also known as the Cow, because there's a cow put up there. There's not a name, a town name for this place. My name is Stephanie Ambrose Tubbs and I work for the Lewis and Clark Trust and the Montana Preservation Alliance, uh, both nonprofits that are encouraging kids to get out on the trail. It's called the Lewis and Clark Companion and it came about because I thought if I don't know some of these people, places and things, and I bet a lot of people reading the journals or books about Lewis and Clark probably would need more information. So it really is like an A to Z guide of people, places, and things associated with the expedition. For as long as I can remember, my father, Stephen Ambrose, a noted historian, when he was writing about history, he had to visit the places he was writing about. His belief was if you're gonna write about places, then you really have to visit them and talk to the locals and also do your research, you know, read the books. When Lewis and Clark were sent out by Thomas Jefferson, he wanted them to find the headwaters of the Missouri River. So that's why they ended up going down to um, around Three Forks, Montana. That's where the Missouri River goes into Three Forks. And those rivers were named by Lewis and Clark. And so with the Clark Fork, which I'm going to have to check my notes, but I believe they named on the way back, um, it was when they were doing further exploration based on already having found the headwaters of the Missouri. And they knew from certain Indian tribes that if they would have gone on what they call the road to the buffalo, they would have probably gotten to the rivers of the Columbia system sooner than having followed looking for the headwaters of the Missouri. And this was all in pursuit of the great Northwest Passage. And the story of Lewis and Clark is really coming to terms with, no, it's not the same geography at all, including the river systems. You want to fish the deepest water possible. There's the thermocline, which relates to the temperature of the water. So in the shallower, faster running places that tend to look more fishy than the deeper holes, there's the deep holes and everybody, meaning the fish, group up on the bottom of the deepest part of those deep holes. It's not as quick of a deal as summertime fishing in that 
usually in those same pools, you can go out and take a cast. Within 12 or 15 casts, you'll have a fish on. So it just takes patience. You can cast the same line 50 times and the 51st time you'll catch fish. Slow and low and patience, patience, patience. I've come up from New York to visit my cousin Barry. He's been telling me about this river for years and years and it took me this long to get here. But it's, it's, it's a, a very peaceful spot. I love fishing regardless of the end result. I do love catching fish, but uh, I've got about 10 minutes before my legs tell me to get out. 